Hello anyone, everyone, and no one. Welcome back to another Command Block tutorial. Today's tutorial, we are going back over something I've covered in the past. We are doing an update to our mob control, mob despawning system. Now, in my previous video, I went into quite a rant at the beginning on mob spawning, well, not mob spawning, mob despawning mechanics on Bedrock Edition. And just by a couple demonstrations here, you can see that if you stay in a specific area long enough, you end up getting tons upon tons of mobs outside of the player's loaded area. This can eventually be detrimental to a realm and a world. It builds up so much lag that it's just game breaking. The core of this system is just set up with a few command blocks here. So the first command block we got here is a repeat unconditional always active and what it's doing is testing for a player. Okay. Now. Outside of that command block, we've got three different comparators. This one here is optional, but I highly recommend it. What this one does is if it detects a player online, it literally looks for a wither to be within 500 blocks of spawn here. So we got TP at entity type wither radius 500. And what we are going to do is teleport them up 250 blocks above this command block and every time that this command block executes it's going to trigger the next one here which is chain conditional always active kill at entity type equals wither radius 500 that's just a little bit of a spawn protection because sometimes people like to summon withers they get loose at spawn and you don't want spawn getting destroyed that's optional there's a few things in the system that are optional you don't need that but if you want it that's how you can set that up next when the command block here detects that a player is online it's going to activate this comparator which will activate this redstone dust which goes into this command block here this command block is the key command block here and as per usual this command block is a bit of a doozy so we're going to open it up here we got repeat unconditional needs redstone so it only activates when it finds a player online and the command itself has a bit of a Bit of a big one here what is going on here is we are executing at a player tilde 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 and we are tp'ing anything that we do not want despawned so like a player we don't want to teleport players over here we don't want items like right here we don't want polar bears we don't want tnt mine cards there there's tons of variations of what you can put in here this is the list that i've came up with now i'll put a copy of this down in the video description because this one's a little bit crazy but the key things here with this is right down here at the bottom right here where my cursor is we are tp'ing any mobs within a radius of 209 blocks and a radius minimum of 128. so that is outside of the player's tick area we are grabbing mobs and we are teleporting them to 396 negative one negative eight now you could change those coordinates to whatever you want i recommend it be like right under this system in a ticking area that way the system is always live what that's going to do is if I give you a demonstration right here, I've got this command block set up right here that's just going to summon me 20 zombies off in that direction, 209 blocks away. So if I hit this and actually come down here because the mobs are going to get teleported right down here, you see nothing's going on. But as soon as I go over one additional block past this, you'll see the command block grabs the mobs. So even though a player only loads, what is it, four additional chunks beside them, which is nowhere near 209 blocks, the game will reach out and get mobs way past that point. And we're demonstrating that with this. Now what this whole system is gonna allow you to do is reduce lag, entity lag that builds up on the outside of your perimeter. Every time you're moving around, like let me see if I can give you an example here. You see we're starting to grab mobs outside of my perimeter and we're teleporting them over here. Now they're technically getting teleported into the void so they will die. But as an added measure, because the mobs are getting teleported to literally right there, one block below the uh, mob control here, I've got a secondary command block here that's kill at entity type equals player, tag equals exclamation point, save underscore me with a radius of five. Now, somebody's going, what's the tag mean? In the previous system, you had to specifically put in here the name of any mob you wanted to say because this system by default will just remove everything. It doesn't care if the mob's aggroed, if the mob's name tagged or anything like that. So what we've done now is we've created another secondary system to be able to save any name mob we want. And how that works is with this command block right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tag at entity name equals save me, add save me. Let me give you the basic gist of what's going on here. So if we come over here and spawn in a zombie and we actually name tag it with save me, as you'll see, it was added into the list. So now it is immune 
to the system. Oops, sorry, wrong thing. It will not be grabbed by mob control. But the beauty of this system is now, if you want to name this mob something else, like let's name it safe and sound here, it's still safe. It may, it doesn't have to display the save me tag to be there. Because if we hit this once again, you can see there are still two entities with the save me tag. Now the negative about this is it requires you to have new two name tags, which come on, it's a name tag. It's not that big of a deal. And it allows you to save a mob whenever you want. All you literally got to do is hit it first with the save underscore me tag, a name tag, and then you can name it whatever you want. And it works beautiful. It does not despawn the mobs at all. Now coming back over here to the system, we've covered the save me, which will save any mob named with the save underscore me tag. We've covered the basics of the mob control and we've covered the wither add on here. Now from here, there's a safety feature built in. All right, so what this whole point of this safety feature is, is when it detects a player, obviously it's gonna power this command block here, which is, I named it player check. Now what we were doing here is we're executing at entity type equals player, tilde, 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 test for at player, radius 250, radius minimum 75. The point of this is we wanna detect a player that's between 250 and 75 blocks away. The reason being is if a player's sitting at a mob farm, okay, say you're sitting at your skeleton grinder, say you're sitting at a blaze farm, whatever, you don't want another player suddenly coming into your radius and despawning your mobs. As players overlap constantly in realms and worlds, and like if you're trying to save a mob and then somebody comes in and despawns it, or you're at a zombie spawner and you've been sitting there for six hours and you've got 250,000 zombies built up and then somebody just comes over to see what you're doing and despawns them. That could be a real pain. Now what this does is if it finds a player within that radius, it's going to activate these comparators on either side of this command block. Now this one is going to activate first because this one has a torch, so it's going to be on an additional tick delay. Now what it is going to do, it is going to be an impulse, unconditional, needs redstone, set block, coordinates, air, zero, replace. Now the coordinates for this system, which will be relative to wherever you set it, is this redstone dust here. What we are wanting to do is when it finds a player within that radius, we want to shut the system down. We do not want somebody despawning somebody else's mobs that they're trying to use. So that's the whole point. It detects a player, it activates, it turns this to dust, which shuts off the whole system. Or sorry, dust. It doesn't turn to dust, it turns it to air, which shuts off the whole system. Now for the system to kick back on, once it finds the player is no longer in this radius, it's going to shut off the comparator on this side, which will reactivate the torch. When the torch is reactivated, we're going to do pretty much the same thing in reverse. We're going to set block at those coordinates, which will be relative to however you build the system. Redstone wire, zero, replace. Now what that'll do is literally what it sounds like. After a player has left the radius, it will turn that back on, which will reactivate the command block and reactivate the whole system. Something worth noting and adding in here. As long as you have this inside of a ticking area, you do not have to build multiples of these in your realm or world. An example would be, this will affect the nether and it will affect the end. The only thing you're going to need to do because the coordinates are going to be relative. So if we go back in here and we look here, 396, negative one, negative eight. If somebody is in the nether, it's going to be sending the mobs to those coordinates in the nether. Let me demonstrate that real quick for you. All right, now, as you can see here, we are currently in the nether and we are heading to the coordinates that the overworld system is sending the mobs. So if I come right over here and drop down right down here, I know you can't see the coordinates because my screen up there is getting spammed, but I just want to prove there's no system here. At one point you had to have one here, but no longer. Now, somewhere around here, and I think it's right over here. Hello, yes, this is the exact same spot. So if I drop down here just to grab mobs, you see they're getting teleported to right here into the void. Now I recommend, highly, highly recommend that you set up a kill command block here, just a block up above it, cover it up in bedrock, and turn this into a ticking area as well. Now to turn this into a ticking area, the best way that I could recommend doing this, if you don't want to get a chunk visualizer, find out and map your chunks, it's just like this. Slash ticking area, add, circle, tilde, 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 one, and then whatever name string you want. This is just what I'm putting just so I know what it is, another kill command. Now what this will do is it'll make a one 
chunk ticking area around this command block here. So if we do that, this area is now always live. So I do not have to worry about the system sending hundreds of mobs over here and them just sitting here and not dying until a player loads the area. This way it's always loaded, they're always dying. Same with the overworld, ticking area, make sure they die. Now you can do this in the end too. I recommend doing this in the end at the same relative coordinates. Just come over, set a block, set your command block, and then literally if you want to make it spawn proof, just throw a piece of bedrock on top of it. Same with here. After you're done here, you don't need anybody messing with the system. You can literally just boom, 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 hide it in bedrock and be done with it and forget it ever exists. Now for most players here, this is all the system they're ever going to need. You've got your test war, you've got your kill, you've got your on off switch, the safety precautions to prevent mobs from despawning, and you've got your weather killer. Now I know I've covered a lot with this system, some added bonuses, some added perks, and there's always going to be rooms for improvement. This is just what I've come up with. So if you have any questions about it that I have not answered in the video, drop them down below and I'll do the best that I can, ans can to answer them. But I think that's just about where I'm going to wrap up this tutorial. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.